Welcome to MCP Lead. Uh, Self-awareness is going to be the quality that we're going to be exploring. So that's why I wanted to make the design yellow so that you could see um, the difference between whatever session you were having before and whatever content you've been through in the day so far um, to kind of take a moment to just reflect on your experience as an MCP um, and also take a moment to understand better what that means for you as a person. What are your your key values and and let's say how to live that but very specifically in the context in which you are in your experience as mcp um so those will be the objectives we're going to be reflecting and, and drawing certain learnings from the first semester that we had so far um if we can call this a semester i think this should be called a lifetime uh considering coronavirus and all the things that um you have been dealing with but still let's call it for now a semester um, secondly, understanding what it says about our values, specifically in the context of when we are trusting others and when we are um, working with a team to deliver our last sprint. And lastly, a, a personal space for you to individually define um, how to take this forward in the, in the half of the term. Um, so that's how the, the space is going to go. Um, so what I wanted to start talking about before going into the activities of LEAD I just wanted to talk to you a little bit of my learnings. I did three MC terms in my ISEG experience. And what I realized in every single term is that every MC term has two parts. It has like before replanning and after replanning. And so normally like teams look very different from the beginning to the end of the experience. On one side, um, you can see this was my MC team on the left side. And then on the right side is the same MC team, but different people. Um, like, for example, well, I don't know if you know Veronica, I think you do because she was MCP last year. She wasn't in the first picture, but she was in the second picture. Um, or you can see there's two white people on the left picture and the white people are not there anymore in the second picture. Not to be racist, it's not about them being white, it's because they left the team. But the point is that um, also you cannot be racist against white people, that's not a thing. But the point here is that, um, as you can see from the beginning of my experience until the end of it, um, it was really different. Also, you can see Shomei looks happier at the end because it's over. So she said, oh, finally, I'm going to stop uh, being an MC, an MC POD. Um, and I finally can be MCPA and, and take over this entity and make it better because Eva was not doing a good job. <laughs> but anyways, um, in general, like from the beginning of the experience until the end, like my team was was really different. And also I was very different. So I remember that in the beginning of my experience, I was not at my best as an MCP. So I was putting a lot of pressure on my team, like micromanaging them. And we were feeling very unaccomplished as a team and everyone was very unhappy and stressed. And like, we really didn't know how to move forward or how to achieve. And there were a lot of things that um, we were not able to, yeah, like to figure out how to do. As you can see in this picture, everyone is like, on one vibe and I'm like very confused looking at the camera. So I think that's a good representation of what I'm saying. Like I was not in tune um, with my team. And then for the second semester, um, like it was better. We were clear about what was the legacy that we wanted to leave for the next generation. We had very good synergies and we were achieving most of our goals, especially because one good thing about replanning is that you get to replan your goals. So you get to understand how like when you were in planning, you were not being very realistic and you were trying to achieve things that maybe did not make sense, not only because of the context, because also maybe you didn't have the resources for that or your predictions were not super accurate. So it's also a good space for you to officially say, hey, these are not the things that we need. We need these things. Um, and uh, feeling very successful towards the end of the MC term is something that I could see as a pattern um, in my three experiences. So my learning from that um, story or that or those experiences that I had is that the rest of your your term depends a lot on how your replanning goes. Because the pivotal moment for my team was when we had replanning and we had conversations about who should be in the team, who should not be in the team, and what kind of people in the team we should be. Um, and we got to understand each other a lot and became very close uh, by consequence. So that helped us to, let's say, take care of all of the dysfunctions that we were having as a team. Um, so that's not to put pressure on you because now your replanning is coming. Um, it's not for you to feel like, oh my God, if I fuck up this replanning, everything is going to be horrible and I'm going to have a horrible rest of the term. 
no, it's to be honest, it's not that hard um, for you to work on these things as long as you are very intentional and mindful about what you are going to be doing in those spaces. Um, and that's why I want to ask you in this session to just kind of take a pause and let's say put everything else on your mind. I'm not sure where you are right now. Like, I don't know if you're paying attention to me in the session only, or if you are working on something else, or like there is some distraction or some MC member texting you about a problem, or you're answering some email while you are in this session. I'm not sure where you are, but where, wherever you are in, my uh, request for this space, um, and it's more of a favor that you can do to yourself is to be present and to forget about everything so that you can really internalize where the experience has been taking you and what that really means for you. Um, so what we are going to be doing is basically answering the question of uh, self-awareness and how can that really help you. Um, so we'll start by first acknowledging what you have been through as an MCP. Then second, we are going to be understanding what matters to you as, as MCPs or as humans uh, when it comes to trusting people and lastly, reflecting on how to increase trust um, in your team for the next term. So if that's clear, we are going to be starting um, with the first part. So I will be putting some questions on the screen and I'll give you a, a few minutes for you to reflect on these questions and you should just journal about it um, in your phone or in your laptop or in your notebook. I recommend just something that will not distract you um, when you are taking notes. So. The first question is, what did you leave behind to become an MCP? So that can be, maybe you're an international like me, so you left behind your entity or your home country or your family or your food, local food can be. Um, but also it can be just like leaving behind job opportunities or um, university courses or just your family in general. What did you leave behind to become an MCP? Who were you before the experience started and what has changed until now? So you'll have five minutes for that, and then we're going to share with each other a bit. Let me just play some music for you as well. Oh, sorry. Sorry, I was muted. Um, nice. So you should have finished by now answering these three questions. What did you leave behind as an MCP? Who were you before, and what has changed? Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put you in breakouts of three people. Hey, I'm sorry. Sorry, everyone. I think you were still having some conversations. Uh, maybe one or two people can just share the output of what you were talking about. So the three questions that I was asking you is what did you leave behind to be an MCP, who you were before, and what has changed? So maybe one person that wants to share. I think I can go. Oh. Uh, this is Karen. I think we were having the same conversation where Varun uh, said the same thing that uh, the question he asked that will you, will you have made the decision if you knew all this was happening? I thought, and the general idea we discussed was that, yeah, it would have been a better decision making because there's a whole expectation change which happened. Like we, you expected something out of the role and probably you are investing more and more and the demand is more and more and more, but you are not knowing what you want to get out of this and how it, you want to get out of this. So yeah, left behind the comfort of uh, the home country, for sure, the language and you know everything, but it's sometimes frustrating for the entire, for example, I have an entire Vietnamese team, so it is very discomforting for them and also sometimes challenging for me to just talk in English and they want to express their stress and their, their vulnerability in their own language and it would be better for them to express it, but I cannot help them and they cannot help mine. And yeah, I mean, yeah, that is what we're discussing. I think I, the whole uh, sort me, Phoebe was like, we would have, if we knew that this would be the range of, of things which would happen over time, it would have been a decision of more better expectation. But yeah, this transition period of change is, is taking a lot from us and the only thing which we cannot see clearly is what is <clears throat> what are we getting out of it and that's what is taking a lot of energy out of us yeah not very relevant sorry but yeah that was what Warren just started the question sorry but we shared no the worries. same part yeah. it's fine like we all have our own um, feeling with the experience and at least it's honest so it is relevant because it's a lead space it's not a 
I don't know, supply chain kind of session where you need to talk about all this technical stuff that you will forget about in five minutes. I mean, not to discredit all the other sessions in the agenda, I think they're good. I just think that <laughs> right now is the space for this. So that's positive. Um, so I just wanted to know, um, maybe one more person wanted to share, like what were your thoughts? What are the things that you left behind? And how has this experience been changing you? Yo, Eva, what you may you want to share? Oh, no, 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 it's okay. That's not my space. Oh, okay. Then why are you texting? No, because you are saying the session before. It's an old ah, response. It's an old message. <laughs> okay, that's fine. Okay, let, let me shoot someone. I'll shoot Varun. Okay, Varun, you want to share? Sure. Um... Yeah, I think uh, for me, my major this thing was when I looked at these questions, I just started getting uh, more questions. And I think one of the questions that came to my mind, like Karan just described as well, was the major question was, if I had known that COVID was coming and so much was coming, and would I still have taken the decision to apply for MCP? And uh, it's a very, I think, difficult question to answer because as much as you want to say yes, there is always also that part where you think that what if the answer was no and are you doing the best job that you can? Uh, at the same time, uh, in terms of leaving behind as MCP, uh, more than opportunities and more than everything else, uh, the one thing that I measure uh, a lot in terms of a commodity and in terms of a currency is time. Uh, the amount of time that you've invested as an MCVP or as an MCP to get to where you are, which is roughly two years and over the past four years as you, know, every, as you progress throughout this organization. Uh, so are you getting, uh, you know, as much uh, out of this role as much as uh, uh, you're putting in? And if you're not getting out of this role as much as you're putting in, then how do you get out of this role what you want? Uh, because, for example, one major thing is uh, it's a very uh, selfish reason, but one of the reasons I also applied to BMC was uh, to travel a lot. Uh, but obviously, because of the pandemic, now that's completely impossible. So how can I make up for that and probably still get like the kind of learnings and experiences out of this role? Uh, so that is something that uh, I'm trying to answer for myself. Uh, obviously, uh, <laughs> mental peace as well, uh, a lot in terms of what you leave behind, because uh, not being MCP is simpler times, uh, choices are easier. Uh, and uh, when you usually sign up for being an MCP, you always think about the kind of positive changes that you want to make in the entity. But uh, a lot of times nobody tells you about what is the kind of shitty things that you need to deal with behind the scenes, which end up taking a lot of your time. Uh, so I think, uh, who, who was I before? Just like simpler, uh, calmer, uh, bet, much better, simple life, I guess. Uh, what has changed? Obviously everything. Uh, but I think uh, it's just about understanding what kind of deficiencies that you're seeing in your role right now uh, and trying to figure or chart out a path to see how you can still get that learning because obviously uh, find things like finances, travel and everything is not something that you're gonna get out of this term. So uh, you have to figure out another way to get these learnings and ensure you're walking away with no regrets. So I have more questions rather than answers from these particular questions. Nice. Yeah, that's okay. And it's also a conversation to start um, and keep going. I think the only thing that I'm thinking about is just how much does it affect us that we keep talking about how, how hard COVID is in terms of the narrative that we have built for ourselves being MCPs, right? Like, I think one of the challenges that you have as a generation is that everyone is telling you how hard your life is because of COVID-19. So then that's the only thing you're thinking about. Like when people ask you, how are you? They're expecting you to say, I'm miserable. I hate my life. Everything is horrible and I want to die. So of course you're going to say that because everyone's telling you all the time that COVID is so hard and you're such a, like your experience is so difficult. And I'm not saying it's not, I wasn't MCP in these times, but we all have like our different kinds of challenges. And then I'm just wondering like, is it really because it's hard or is it because that's the environment and the conversation we're keeping here? Um, um, yeah. And I mean, this, just a, just a context to add, I think the more stressing part is that we are not familiar with the pace of result because earlier, you know, you did exchange, you got exchange, you, you were, we were seeing the result happen. Now the product development and whole innovation takes more time. And as MCPs also, we've never seen that kind of pace 
So that is something which drags the energy because generally, you know, company or somewhere, they would know that, okay, product development would take one and a half years, then it would go to testing, then it would go to this phase, and then you have a launch in probably say two, three years. Now it's all about uh, we were familiar with, you know, fast action, fast result. And then this is this is very different uh, chart uh, place for us. So I think that is what is uh, changed. <laughs> in my perspective that we are not familiar with the timeline of, of how things work and how innovation works exactly and cannot yeah. see the result. And that's why I said that I cannot see the outcome of what we, will, we are doing right now. Yeah, I mean, I just think that the outcome of what you were doing was never the number of realizations that you're having on Expa. That's my, my personal opinion. That's not the metric of success of your role as an MCP. And if that's, your, if that's what's gonna keep you going, then that's very fucked up. And that, that also talks about why in the first semester of my term, I was so miserable and it was only better as time was passing is because I was dropping a lot in the first semester of my term. I was depressed in my room, crying, not knowing how to talk to people. I don't think it's much different from what COVID is causing us. I mean, I'm not saying again that COVID is not important, but what I'm saying is like, we need to stop focusing on how bad that is and how different it is. What I'm asking you here is how are you different? That was the question here. Who were you before and what has changed in you? Because what I'm trying to get you to see and understand in this space is what are the things that you have already learned instead of thinking, what am I gonna get out of this MCP term? What did I already get out of it? It's already been six months. Your term is gonna be over in two days, like three days. This is it. You're not gonna be top one entity in exchange. That's not a thing anymore. Then what's gonna be the thing that's gonna really be an outcome that you are achieving from it. So I'm not here to disagree with you. I'm just giving you a different perspective to the thoughts that you are having that I'm also telling myself because I'm also gonna be working in this context and I'm also having to take decisions that no other PI has been taking um, because of where we are right now um, in the world as an organization as well. But moving into the next part, what I wanted you to do is just write down all the moments and the people that you are grateful for in the past year so far. And maybe this question can also shed some positive light into um, the previous narrative of maybe I wouldn't have made this choice if, if I knew um, how the context is. So let's just write down this. What are all the moments and people that you're grateful for in the past year? Take two minutes to do that individually and then we'll debrief as a group. Cool. So now that you're done, we're gonna put you into breakouts for four minutes just to share and then we'll come back and share to the group as well. Nice. So we were talking about now moments and people that we are grateful for in the past semester. Um, so would anyone from a different group would like to share with us what was the main conversations that you were having? Uh, I would like to go. That's fine. Yeah. Uh, okay. So um, what I was talking about was also like bringing from the past conversation that we were having. Uh, I actually signed up to be MCP because there was the virus. Uh, that's something I actually knew that was coming in. And I knew this is something I needed to take care of at this point in time. So to be honest, I'm grateful for the entire experience. It seems extremely difficult at times, but I feel this is like teaching me things which I would never have learned in any other role. And I'm grateful for the entire experience as a whole, not just for like moments or people. So I think once you start being experience, you start being grateful for every little small thing that happens or you know, like you go through throughout the way. So I think, yeah, grateful for everything at this point. Nice. That's a very nice uh, state of mind. I like it. Um, cool. Nice. Anyone else wants to share from can be this group or another? Yeah, I want to go. Yeah. Uh, I think first one I feel grateful for is that um, I, I have, I'm in, able to be in this role because I have another candidate running with me and I know that there's not ground here. Actually, also thank you for the candidate because it helped pushing me a lot on, you know, how to prepare better and, you know, learn from him as well. And second of all, I think I have a very good predecessor and, you know, two of them are also in the room. Yeah, but then uh, she did guide me through a lot uh, in the transition period, even though it's just only within a month. And I also feel grateful for one of my teammates uh, he's super honest with me. Like when I get into the team, he tell me that I do not like you and our relationship will just only last on professional. 
do not go beyond personal. I don't want to go talk with you on that. Um, I appreciate on how he's being so honest with me and he's also finding a way on how he can trust me better. So he talked to Phyllis on that as well. Um, I also feel very thankful for my team. Uh, my team actually is separated into four locations, like basically four countries. And we never met each other together as a team. But they are still very purposeful, passionate, uh, honest and cute, uh, even though undergo uh, so many conflicts within the team and they are working very hard as well. Um, also, my team are very vulnerable to share each other emotion. Uh, I feel happy for them. And I have a very good CC team for IC that I can put so much trust and also accountability to them that trusting them, they are able to run in the conference in the best way that we can do. And I think I miss out one thing that is very important that uh, Chitra remind me is about my parents. Yeah, so I think they also take care of me a lot along the time as well. Yeah, so feeling grateful about it. Nice. <laughs> Always remembering the parents at the end because if it wasn't for them, well, no one would be here. So that's a good point too to remember. Yeah, I should have. I should text my mom. I will text her after this. Thank you for the reminder, Travis. Um. So yeah, I mean, like, I think it's also good to remember um, these things that we are grateful for. Um, and the funny thing is, I, I, it's funny to see, it's that a lot of times we want to be grateful for things that make us happy and we forget that challenges and difficult experiences should make us grateful too. I think some of the biggest learnings that I had of my MCP term are from the people who did not even finish the term and made my life miserable and like really, really gave me a hard time. These two people are the ones probably that taught me the most, not because they wanted to teach me anything, but just because I was able to grasp some learnings from the challenges that we were going through um, or that I was going through needing them. So I think it's nice always to remember that. Um, and now in the last part for you, in, our, in order for you to kind of close the first um, the first part of your term, what I wanted to ask you is making a list of all the people who have wronged you or hurt you and all the situations in which, oh, okay, I'm sorry, all the situations in which you've been hurt. And then the most important question is what did you learn from all of this and how did this situation make your life better in the end so far? So maybe for some of the experiences that you've had, you are not ready to process and you're not ready to see what is the learning from there. So you don't need to put everything but just put the things that you are ready to think of now and that you can already see certain learnings coming from there. Um, so we'll give you again, three minutes to think alone and then four minutes to be in the breakout. Um, and then we'll be able to share together. Mm -hmm. Different people again. It's also nice for me to hear from different APMCPs one more time after being there. Um, so anyone wants to share? What were the main experiences that you have gone through that are difficult and what you have learned from them? Uh, I think I can share. Yeah, Ima. Wait, okay, let me yeah. just find your, your face. Oh, hi, Ima. Okay. Yeah, okay. So, well, my experience is, um, so I think the, my answer to this question is really more with an alumnus. Um, so we had a really good relationship prior to being MCP. Um, but then when I got into the role, um, he didn't actually believe that I could be an MCP and he thought that my prior MCP sort of like manipulated the whole MCP process just for me to be elected. And I knew that after I got elected. And so um, when I heard that you no know, from my my predecessor, um, I got really offended because um, I was super genuine with our really or with my relationship with him. I see him as a mentor. But I think what I learned from that experience is people, no matter how good you are to them, sometimes have a say on like you as a person. And I think that um, it's very important, or at least for where, from where I am now, I take that as an opportunity or as an inspiration to always um, improve myself and become more confident. Because I think at first, it became sort of a self-doubt of who I am really as a person and all those different things. But I think from that experience, I became more stronger. And I think that proved that, okay, um, you know, things will always be something like that. You'll always go through different challenges. And I think what's important is that you have that strength to believe in yourself and that you're confident with yourself. And as long as your people trust you and that they believe in you, 
um, I think that's what's important the most. So yeah, I think that's my, my sharing. Nice. Thank you, Ima. That's good. Uh, anyone else would like to just say something? Or if not, we can move on. I would like to share. Yeah, go. So uh, like I have one person. So like there was this one LC that we were, you know, investigating on financial discrepancies and they just stopped communicating with us at all. So we would like ask them things and they would stop telling us anything. And, uh, and I got really frustrated and I was like, you know, why is this LCP or LCVP finance not following up over things so serious? And like they kind of ended up thinking that, you know, I as an MCP want to get that LCP impeached or like put up an ethics case on them or stuff like that. And they were like very, very reluctant to talk to me in any way. So it just made me realize that, you know, sometimes I, you just have to like talk to people on a human level and not uh, like from like a formal ground. And like I started talking to them on a human level, started connecting with them and asking about the issues. And then we did prove that there are financial discrepancies and we're still uh, furthering our investigation with our audit with them. But then again, I realized then it's very important that if you have to get through people, you have to be like a little more empathetic and a little more um, upfront with them rather than just relying on formal means of getting to them. Nice. Yeah, I think um, those are good. And I think what I like about both of your sharings is that it has to do with how to build trust um, with people. And, and that was what I wanted to talk about moving on from the session is that what, what really changed and going back to my story in the beginning where I was talking to you about how my replanning was a pivotal moment of my, my MCP experience and my team experience in general, how we were enjoying as MC is that trust was one of the things that I realized were a very big, let's say, element of why we were not really working as a team or why it was not to move. So it's either for me to, to my, or in like members within each other or in the plenary um, towards me or myself and my team towards the plenary. So that was, let's say, what was in my mind. So I actually wanted to share with you this tool um, that I used since I started my MC experience in Malaysia back in 2016. Um, and this is called the anatomy of trust. So I'm sure that you have seen it or heard of it uh, at least once in your life. And if you haven't, then that's okay. Um, but the anatomy of trust basically has different elements that explain um, how trust works for humans, right? And then it ba basically talks about the fact that there are different elements that make you trust or not be able to trust people and what you really value when it comes to trusting people. So it first talks about uh, boundaries. So if you're a person who if you like maybe for you it's important to trust people to understand what are your boundaries and people are respecting those and as well as you being able to know what other people's boundaries are um second thing is reliability this is very common um, maybe you are the kind of person that trusts people because they say they do what they say they're going to do maybe it is accountability and what really matters to you is understanding um let's say when people are making a mistake that they actually apologize and make amends for those mistakes that they are making or maybe it's the vault, which is an element of understanding more of from a perspective of people do like do the people that you come to and you tell your experiences to, do they keep those experiences with themselves or are they going around and sharing? And maybe that's what really matters for you to build trust with people. Or maybe it's about integrity. Um, so knowing that people are doing the right thing over what is easy or non-judgment, which is about understanding that when you are expressing your opinion, people are not judging you and they're making you feel safe. Or it can be generosity, which is more of like, when you're talking to someone, are they actually interpreting what you are saying or are they believing that you're coming from your best intentions? So these are some of the elements that define how humans, um, let's say, build trust with each other. And I know that trust is normally the thing that you talk about in the beginning of your term, like, oh, you need to build trust with your team, but let's be real. You don't build trust with your team when you're in a honeymoon stage uh, with a flip chart in a planning process or over Zoom. You build trust after you have been going through all the shit shows, and then you get to know how people are in real life, which is when problems actually come up. Um, so that's why I want you to think about this. We're not gonna have the time in the session um, to properly debrief and talk about every single thing, but I really want I want you to think of this when I was giving the explanation. How do the people that you trust the most 
in your team behaves like do they have an element of um, their boundaries are very clear or is it because they do the things that they say they will do or is it because they keep the secrets that you tell them or is it because they make you feel safe when you're sharing with them why are those the people that you trust the most right and why are those like those people who you don't trust in why you don't trust in them like what are the the parts of what trust means for you as an individual are they breaking um and how you can actually approach them and have that conversation with them that's that's what i want you to think about and also reflect on yourself what matters for my team to trust me and what are the things that i have done in the past six months to gain that trust and what are the things that i have done to break that trust so you start first by understanding how you are as an individual knowing what is your experience so far what are all the learnings you're having but don't stop the conversation there take it one step forward and talk about what really matters to you when it comes to trusting people um so maybe you can just share in the chat now what matters to you for trusting people or what makes you really trust people which of these elements is it for you as a person just at the top of your mind it doesn't have to be super accurate reliability accountability and non-judgment accountability nice so okay cool so then i think those are the conversations that i um encourage you to have with yourself and also with your team um integrity that's a very big one for me too um and then for the third part and this is something that i also want you to think about is reflecting on how let's say how you can improve the trust of your team um, in the next semester. Um, so before the RPMs are over, my suggestion for you is to think about these things, um, not before the RPMs are over, sorry, before you're replanning, um, to think about these things. If your term was a picture, like if you, now you know that coronavirus is here, now you know that this is the context, now you understand where you are standing, what would be the picture of your term? How do you want it to look like? Being very realistic about it. What are the things that you are going to do and what are the things that you're not going to do? And what kind of environment are you going to build in your team? What's going to make you trust your team more? Is it having a conversation with them about the things that you have achieved? If it's about accountability, is it about making sure that everyone in your team understands what are the things that they have done wrong and how they can move forward? So maybe you need to build that space for your team to acknowledge collectively the things that you haven't done properly. Um, or is it about um, maybe integrity, like Karan said? So then what are the things that you as an MC team can do to ensure that you're doing the right thing? What does the right thing mean to you? Um, what will make your team trust each other more? And what will be your role as MCP in making this happen? So this is just a suggestion for you to think before replanning that I think made a difference for me um, when I was in that, in that space. And then I wanted to leave you with three last messages just to, to keep something in your mind or to leave you with. Um, because I know the experience that you are facing is really difficult and now you are going to be in the period of the middle point towards the next part of your term. And I understand how um, you might be feeling, but what I really want you to get out of this space is just the opportunity to see hope at the end of the tunnel and see that you have certain amount of control over the rest of the experience. So first of all, it's like it is in your control entirely. Remember when you really wanted this. Um, and what I mean by that is that as much as people keep saying, um, telling things to you about how hard your life is as an MCP and how unpredictable this context was, it is important for you to take control over the situation in the means of what you can control. Right now in the world, no one has answers to what we are facing, but I don't think we ever had the answers. Like who's gonna say that the world was better before coronavirus? It was the same or even worse, or it's, yani it's bad anyways, but you cannot let that affect you and who you are as a person and how you are living your life and your experience. And then second is that you will feel better if you really push for what you believe in until the last day. So a lot of times as MCPs, you have things that you really want to achieve and you drop the battle or you drop the ball in the middle of the, of the race because maybe people don't seem to be in with the idea as much. But if you really feel something in your heart, something that you think it should be in a certain way and your MC team is not that in, in that level, then bring them to that level with you. Um, and then the last thing is that don't end your term with regrets. Do the right thing and demonstrate integrity now that you are in the term. 
a lot of times with MCPs finish their experience, they look back and they say, or oh, I wish that I could be happier. I wish that I was healthier. I wish that I didn't eat so much trash food. I wish that I slept more. I wish that I didn't eat so much Indomie and I ate so, some like nutritious food because now I'm feeling very lazy or very heavy. Well, that was mine. I gained 30 kilos in Malaysia because of Indomie. It was delicious, by the way. Um, but the point here is that don't wait for the experience to be over to have regrets. There for sure will be things that you maybe feel that you could have done better always and you will always see roof of improvement, but you're in the term now, you're in the experience now, and there's a lot of things that you can still do, um, even if it's a different thing that you, uh, from what you expected. So I'm sorry for going a bit over time, um, but thank you so much for...